Mm-mm. Oh, shit. Part one, Legend of the Machete, the Yamakasa, a series of actions, reflections, and uses of machetes, parangs, and the Yamakasa. And we will need to buy a us do us do casar. Uh huh. Usted y dos dos van caminando y van tirar car bicho. Es muy maravilloso. Ya. Ya. Me llevo a los niños. Johncito para se fue. Ajá. Se lo llevó ya. Vamos a ver el chancho. Any real review of a tool should consider all or at least most of the usual uses of the tool, maybe some unusual ones, during hard, real use over a period of several years, otherwise it is mere speculation, unless you speak of throwaway tools. The following film review contains footage from multiple locations during the past seven years. It shows the Amakasa machete and some other tools in multiple uses during real hard work and during creative fun. Hope you enjoy. Good day, Apache Wolf Scout here. A little bit about this video and why I made it, yeah? Okay? I was born in Nigeria, my dad was a zoologist, yeah, 1965. So pretty much straight away, we were out in the bush. Expeditions camping into the bush, the real bush, yeah? Uh, at least to that side. Oh, it's difficult because it got three quarters of the way through. I need to do a back cut, but uh, hanging on with one hand, etc., etc. If 
pretty difficult, but it's all right, three quarters got through in like no time at all. Hanging on with one hand and just your feet, you know, just and bouncing in there. And you realise it's about to go. And it's a, a log with enough weight there to seriously smash you, smash your face to smithereens basically. It's pretty difficult to move. So, <laughs> that's how long that is. But, you know, also around there, that's where I came across the machete. Virtually from being born, you know, one of my little songs, a joke, you know, I was born with a burin a musical bow in one hand and a machete in the other. Yeah, that was the, the tool of choice. And it wasn't something to talk about or use as a hobby or an interest. It's how people lived, survived, yeah? E quali utilizza per la soga? Sì. Mi rico, muy rico. Must be one of the best tools. This is fresh cut yew. A good thick piece of fresh cut yew, yeah? You just. This is not because you'll notice the signs of a tarantula. Hi. Oh, yeah. Pues no hay agua casa. Uh-huh. Okay, super important tool. So I came to love and respect this instrument. Now I would never have thought of making AR, a, a video review on this. I was making films about things I loved later on in my life. Uh, most of my life I haven't even had a stills camera, let alone a film camera. Too busy doing stuff. But then I wanted to communicate with people. Good things, meaningful things, how to take care of our earth, about culture, nature. Angle here. Desayuno con machete. Ah, oh, but now it's actually. <laughs> No, he's just going to spit that battle. Look at that. Ah, this is of those, those of us. Mira. Ah. Machete. 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 No, I don't. This tree, but she's very big. Deep red, you can stick. I loved nature, just an infinite world of love. I cannot tell you how much I loved the plants, trees. You know, my favorite book was West African birds. I love birds, I love snails, reptiles, and I adored the trees. I spent half of my time, most of my time, climbing trees, yeah? My mother says that, you know, I was, before I could even walk, I was clambering about in the lower branches of trees, and I still to this day, I love trees, yeah? Okay, we'll come back to that in a little bit. Yeah, I mean, they're our relations, they're our friends. You know, even later on, I moved to cities for a little bit of time here and there. I would have died without trees. Desperately overwhelmed with machines and architecture. Depressed, go to the park, climb a tree. 
Ah, I'm on top of the world, Ma! <laughs> the real treasure is in the leaves. As the harmer said, my daughter, when she was, I don't know, something like three or four years old. Half ball, just flatten the bottom down a little bit. Yeah, I've got a few on the back as well. Yeah, you do the kick and you have the stick down, just stops it flying off, hitting you in the face. Modern man, he's a mutation. He dreaming had become a nightmare. He's getting to this right here. Hard modern man is a mutation. He dreaming had become a nightmare. He's getting to this right here. This is pretty soft. This is the point. Still live volcano. <laughs> oh, look there, the amber. Oh, machete. There seems to be an obsession within bushcraft survival type blade reviews with fire steels or ferro rods. Personally, I consider the modern technology on par with a lighter and barely bushcraft. My blade is my fire steel, so to speak. Here we demo the Amakasar with a piece of flint picked up from the beach and some homemade char cloth. Please note that skills, techniques and concepts glimpsed or hinted at in this introductory film are demonstrated and elucidated quite fully in The Legend of the Machete, the Yamakasar Part 2, Uses of the Machete. Please await release. Meanwhile, you can watch some of my other films, if you like. Tiny little ones there, yeah? Smaller, bigger. Yeah? Relaxed place, yeah? More, more, more relaxing. <laughs> Surprise, surprise. Get a one. Carving away. And that's the cleverest for you, to be honest. And then I saw there were reviews of blades, but I was shocked because these people don't seem to use them. 
if they know how to use them, they don't show it. And they don't talk about the cost to nature of this tool, which is something we're going to come back to, this cost to Earth. Nature doesn't really like metal tools. The worst is the sound of the chainsaw in many ways for the forest, you know. In, I mean, obviously there's worse things, nuclear power, so on and so forth, space exploration, but yeah. But you can try and pay back and use this tool, tool wisely. Hey. <laughs> still, still hard, mate. Unbelievable friend. When you have a tool that you trust and you love, and you have over many years and never ever lets you down, sharpens well, does every task. Got one bit of rot, but most of it is still well hard. You must have said the best, man. Woo! Donk! And you can see, it's like a face. There's the mouth, there's the eyes. You open up that hole. And you see the, the lines? Yeah? Just to make it a bit easier, I've drawn over the two lines on the bottom, and the one down the top is the mohawk. There's the mohawk line, yeah? With the eyes, three holes, you strike perpendicular to the hairline, yeah? To the mohawk line, yeah? Strike perpendicular to that. Should be one good strike, you get it. So, basically ever since childhood, probably the three or four I've probably using the machete. Not all the time, you know, but I started to use it. And I've come to love it and appreciate it. And then during the last seven years, I had this particular machete, it's a Makassar, which I just found unbelievably versatile, unbelievably tough. So that, coupled with the reviews that I'd seen, which to be frank, I just thought were pretty rubbish. And with the fact that I need to get people to understand the cost of our lives in general, but the particularly of these metal tools that we've got, and to offer something to pay back to the earth for it and to learn more about it, and to give more back in different ways. And that is what made me make this video. You see? Two beautiful halves, mate. You see if you just one hit. If you miss any, you might have to do two. Yeah, plenty of nice bits of fresh coconut. Well, yeah, fresh. Big hairy leg. Well, what you think there, young lady? A ver si acaso salimos a trabajar ahorita. Claro. A vender. Claro, claro, muy bien. There we go. It's rough. Maybe this one is looking in. Time to go somewhere a bit more salubrious, I think. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> 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 mate.
and I think so sort of wood's good. That should be quite a good that should be quite a good thickness. The fishing just right by the arc where we leads out the little village. Happy days. Happy, 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 happy days. I tell you what, I am so grateful. Why? Nunca credite. Pega dois. E um caminho. One shot, you've got both. Senhor. Pegando dois é muito. Check it out. How is that? I mean, how proud do you get? Two fish with one shot. Cowboys got the spear, we got the neutron bomb. That's where we win, bloody will run. When we got the spear, we got the neutron bomb. That's where it went, bloody will run. Because modern man is a mutation, who dreaming has become a nightmare. To this Because modern man is a mutation Beginning has become a nightmare He's spreading to this body earth Woomera are uh, blank, hopefully. The tools are coming into shape. Spear throw and Woomera. What? That's the natural back. But this is entirely shaped. All the shaping has been done just with the Amaka side, yeah? Still got a little way to go. Still got to put the arm, the point in the back there, yeah? Take the spear. That's another, another style of Wilmer, a short one. Wilmer is much larger than that, slatters in general. Sometimes, yeah, much, much larger. Sometimes a bit larger. Around the same place. I'm going to be spitting down. However, I spit down when I meet, when I, when I meet this, because it's so, not however I spit down. I know which one I'm going to spit down to the shape of wood you just saw there, yeah? You can't really see it, can you? Spit it down perfectly. Yeah, so these are becoming woomeras, yeah? Decorating this critter, see the mouth, the eye, but she's coming on beautifully. I really love this, it really works well. She's really beautiful. She sees she, there's, there's bend, but it's straight between the point and the back. But there's a bend. I enjoy this kind of spearing, but it's difficult. <laughs> this wood. Strong. That mosquito up there. Get it back. This is about as usual. Friendly little critters, aren't they? Beast. But remember this is yeah this is still good tough wood yeah so I'm gonna go around it all you do just turn it around bang so I went out through quicker than I was expecting I was expecting to have to probably go around because it's you know it's a fairly thick bit of bit of that hash to be honest For me, mate. 
and then just cut a V. Plenty of different grits in here. Yeah. So if you wanted to go real razor sharp, yeah, you sharpen using a stone and you've got to the stage where it feels rough. Obviously that's where, where, where sharpening is causing little tiny bits of metal to go over, some people call them birds, yeah? It's really sharp at that point, but if you want to go extra sharp, which I don't usually do with a machete, but you can do, say you wanted to real, do real fine cutting like grass, a really sharp bit of arm um, whittling something, you could do it, you just get a strop, so you should have a good leather belt, yeah? A good wide, thick leather belt. Okay, pretty simple really. Just... Yeah? Etc. Yeah? That'll get it razor sharp, mate. Ha! Beauty. Ah, ule. Sip the lane. Yeah, like that. You don't need to film that. Look at that. Say hello. May, I'm gonna have to get a new spindle as I said, or maybe even a new hardboard, because only time will tell. Just like this. Redone in a while on a long flexible bow, which is the way to do it, yeah? You know, that, of course I made that. The bow and the fibres, yeah? See that size? They're huge. Look at that man. That is so cool. I'm so grateful. Oh man, it's our magic. Oh. There you are, part way down. Yeah. Beautiful though. And I think that's just about right for what I needed for the reconstruction of our bow, fire bow, Egyptian fire bow. Bit. But I just want to cover sheaths. Now clearly I didn't make the one for this Makasa, but usually I make it my own. So here's a little couple of little, just a little tips yet, okay? I usually have um, a leather belt or maybe a rope belt. This is beautiful rope that I made myself, yeah? Beautiful, it's Ute and palm trunk, yeah? So that, that's, that's handmade by me, that beautiful rope. So my usual design, I usually favour a super simple design. I just do the sh a shape for the blade and I would often sew it. Okay, now I'll just tell you something super important about sheaths, okay? Now how I keep this in here is just with a simple bow. Yeah, I just have tie, I make two holes on the back, put in some uh, uh, string or cordage that I made and just tie it in like that, yeah? Now, here's the most important thing, okay? Doesn't matter how good you say your sheath is, oh, it doesn't come through or whatever. Do not do what you see most people do in videos and in life, is hold it like this and draw it out. Yeah, you're, uh, I don't care, it will come through your sheath sometime if your knife or machete is strong. Anyway, even if it doesn't, you might transfer that habit to sheaths which aren't that good or teach other people to do this. It seems to be natural, you do that. No, 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 or that, no. You simply hold it onto the actual main body of the blade, yeah? 
that is how you should pull any tool out of its case here, yeah? not on the blade like this. It's waiting for a nasty accident, okay? Put it in and draw it out carefully, yeah? So this is um, some kind of South African machete, I don't know, got it for like five pounds. It's all right, not as good as the Imakasa. So there's my tip, just make a simple square, you can sew it or you can rivet it. And then of course to put your belt handles, you just make two, you probably can't see very easily, but you just get, you just cut down one layer and another layer to make two holes, like a normal sheath, yeah? You can sew around them to strengthen them if you want. And there you go. Very, very simple. In the uh, part two uses, I'll show you an even more uh, primitive looking one than this. But it's pretty nice, isn't it? Nice uh, cordage. Ah, I've got to show you this, man. Here. So people sort of tend to not do enough of cordage. That is a four strand round plate with four different colours, four different materials, full of four directions. Yeah, from four different places in the world, man. This is an amazing, amazing thing, yeah? I do a lot on cordage, proper rope. You can see hanging on the wall there. Yeah, proper rope, man. Proper rope, I don't just mess about. Don't just mess about, yeah? Proper rope. Take like like all your rope. It's so hot. Making fire like this. Yes. <laughs> Here we are. On a little rowing jaunt through um, backwaters of the Amazon. Is there anything that adds? Great, absolutely fantastic. Great fun. We're down on the ground to do a bit of work with the axe so I don't leave a feel that she's left out. So it's important to know something about your tools, ideally about their manufacture. And ideally, in bushcraft, you should you have made the tool, or you should know how to make the tool, at least something about it. So I made my own axe and the handle, the weight of everything, with the help of Spencer Larkham. As I said, I've made my own long, long sword, parang type knife, the upside down knife, the medium sized bush knife, and the, and the small bush knife. And those are detailed as well. This axe isn't just made like a hatchet, one piece of uh, metal, yeah? The four, the four blade, the cutting edge, is a different metal inserted and then wedged in there and sandwiched between. It's really important. Check out some of the Grand's Force videos, for example. It's a heat or a crystal with a metal maintain the same size. May out of that, actually. And I may use the perhaps, but I'm trying to just refine it a bit. That back end, very nice now. Just should be just right. Maybe too thick. Come back. Ah, 
Ah, uh, since I've been going on about making your own tools, well, here is two of the three beautiful knives that I made with my friends in, in Indonesia, because you should know how to make your own tools, yeah? The medium-sized knife, yeah? The, the medium-sized one, yeah? Proper good chopper I gave to Tom Brown Jr. He, he had given me three courses. Now, I, when I was there, he made me promise not to tell people that he'd given them, to, to save the staff and other people getting jealous, so I didn't. But I guess it was a long time ago now. But thanks for those courses. He got a bloody great knife there. It's worth thousands and thousands of pounds. Two trips to Indonesia over three months. The third knife, of course, being the river otter, my daughter's knife, yeah? This beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little knife, yeah? Absolutely gorgeous. So nice. The handle's so beautiful. The, the wood is incredible. The seas are nice. They're well good knives, man. As I said, you know, they're worth thousands of pounds each because, I mean, Pat Dunny Mann, who helped me make them, yeah? He charges per millimetre on his Chris's. He's that good a maker. Took two trips to Indonesia. So, yeah, there was, there was some gift, man. Okay, enough. Yeah. <laughs> We know who you are in my casa. We know who you are. You're the best by far. Bien. Muchas gracias, señor. I'm a hunter, a trekker, a singer of songs. I'm a ditch man, a song man. I know where I belong. Following's a nice little ditty. I hope you'll agree. It's an Earth Warriors uh, and a Capoeira song. Yeah, it's about uh, defending the forest. Yeah, defending the woods and the jaguar, the winged jaguar. My Capoeira name. Yeah, I also Flying Jaguar, winging, winging Jaguar. Oh yeah, and played with using machete, yeah? Eu sou guardador do mato, do selva, e de todo natureza. Ai, quem cortar meu mato? Supra ganho dinheiro, supra ganho ouro, supra cresce sonha, supra fazer grande rancheira, pra vacas ou pra qualquer coisa. Eu vou cortar, cortar, cortar vocês! Okay, so I hope you enjoy it, but remember this first part is just some shots of what will be elucidated in the other parts. So enjoy this. There are various little bits of teachings in it as well, kind of like philosophical teachings, so I hope you can um, bear them in mind and not get put off by them if you're used to just people just blabbering about a blade for ages and not doing anything or just cutting things up because there is more life to life to it believe it or not guess what i'm making here Imakasha, the best. Should come through now with a break, a simple break like this. Look. Get that through, ready. Yep. Yeah. 
Mama, Mama, Bebe. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful ancient scene? Check that out, man. Such beauty. Such beauty. Such beauty. Shit. 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 Woo! Ha-ha! <laughs> I'm not gonna say the best by far! Woo! -hoo. Like I said, generally, that bit, you leave a bit, that bit isn't sharpened. You can hold it further up the blade, but it's kind of good. I mean, I was told it was mainly because of the cutbacks, you know, which is an easy thing to get. You get a glance as you hit, it can easily happen, you get a glance back. But for whatever reason, that's the way to do it. Certainly good for holding. I'm a warrior, a wanderer, a dreamer, a mystic. I'm a scout tracker, a songman, a ditch man, a mystic. This modern man bullshit sends me ballistic. Hoy lo vamos a matar para darnos una buena comerona. Chicharrón con banano. Sí. Especial, especial. Muy bien. <risa> bueno. Bueno, bueno. This here is the uh, beautiful little hummingbirds. How small it is. There's my little finger. You see the fibers. Corn bean. This is a brilliant burning wood as well. You know, I think it was used in bakeries and certainly used in, in, in for commercial uses. Yeah, really, it's a beautiful wood. I love the bark. It's, it's just got a lovely quality. Yeah. Cut, cut off a few little twiggy bits to, to get through some bigger bit. <laughs> Sounds good. Right, now we get to a bit more um a bit more of a a bit, yeah. No, it's, not, it's nothing nothing big, I'm just showing you a little bit of campfire. Just showing you a little bit of campfire chopping, that's all. One, two, and the old one. So we do this in two, two, yeah. That's so lovely, man. Don't this camera pick it up in this light. This is a lovely wood, man. So nice. My side never. It's beautiful. The soil is just examining it. Yeah, it's a lovely, lovely wood. Lovely. Hornbeam. It's a great tool, this. This here is the Amakasa. There's plenty of other good machetes out there as well, of course, Tramontillo. The basic point I'm making is get one that the natives, so to speak, locals use to live by. It's not a fancy tool that they buy to blab about. They, they need it to live, yeah? And this sort of thing, very cheap, very strong, very versatile. Then I would like you, I invite you, to spend all the extra money that you would have spent on doing something like give the money to the World Land Trust to save rainforests for perpetuity. Give something to future generations. One reason why you don't sharpen that last little bit there. Sharpening my ship. The free water stones. The free stones. Yeah. Imakasa man is the best. Just take the edge off. Take the edge off the air.
Yeah. Perfect, eh? Finishing off the other side. There we go, mate. Camp plate, leg, ground, log, bit of bark. Is it? Yeah. You can even buddy your toast with it, mate. Yeah? Ooh. <laughs> In this case it's margarine for the daughter and daughter. Bit of honey. Give it back down. Camp toast mate. Made on the fire. There you go. Happy. Remember what happy. Bobo. The birds are again that time. Okay, man. Well done. Give something to future generations, and I invite you to do it through this project, where we want to save a hundred thousand acres of rainforest. Us together, you and me, all of us, yeah. And we'll call it the children's forest, and it's something for the future, yeah. Something to leave a legacy and pay back our debt to nature. How are you doing, Yehama? Okay. Making some camp bread. Yeah. Wicked. Nice little fire. <laughs> Maybe the bow drill. Power filming. That's a great eye. Oh, you're making a great snake round there, Ahama. It's brilliant. Oh, sorry. Sorry, fella. It's really well because the heat goes in between. It's a good way, but also Rebecca's is really nice as well. That's the snake with the joined up um, bits, but that is also a really good, neat bit of arm. Um, bit. Mine doing. I really don't want mine in fire. <laughs> I think this one's ready now, pop it. Kindling that's going with this inner kindling. So, dandelion fluff, this is red cedar bark and buff. Char cloth, carbon steel knife, up and down that one. Nice bit of flint, Dorset coast. Probably get one in a minute. Yeah, you can see some parts coming out. There you go. Size so good. Just about keep it up. Yeah, it is, yeah. Oh. You got it. So just keep that. Hold on, does. So just blow that into there a bit more. Mm. Pack a drop sticker in there. Pick that a little lot up. Put a gentle blow in there. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Let me just go check it. Somebody get her in there. That's how you do it. Brilliant. Oh, Fucking nice, nice one, Beth does. I might Perfect. move the stamp just a tiny little bit over. Did we get too close? Wicked. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, ah. pretty cool. It's been a while since we've been oh, oh, Burning! Fire! Perfect job, man. That is sweet. Righty. Sweet, isn't it? Way to get a fire going. Oh my that god. On the way. <laughs> so here we go. All that needs is a push together. Got a lovely. Just out of interest to, to show you some concern with our more older technology and and natural materials. Here here's some uh mainly sewing kit in there. There's a hand axe and sewing kit and some nice moccasins. Look at the stuff. Broke this bone down, yeah? Luckily it just split into in, in one, yeah? Bang. Like that, yeah? I'm gonna keep this bit um for a knife. And this bit I'm gonna try and split again. Should I break it, yeah? So what I've ended up with, the total split. Is a, is a different split. I, I, I wanted a nice one long bit and I've got that. Pretty much chance I reckon. Lucky. But anyway I also wanted some bits because I want to make shavings. Ah oh, jeez man. 
but when you break things you suddenly find you've got other tools this is an amazing an amazing oh the point on that geez sharpen these down knife edges or whatever you know you just find yourself with so many little tools barker you're worse than Roddy bloody corbett mate get back to the subject you're rambling oh sorry sir sorry sir back to the america sir sorry sir stand on that beauty Uh -uh. Oh my god, glasses, glasses. Right, I can't believe it. Got to this point in the review. Now, I didn't need to know all these facts, I just need to know it's a good machete. But let me just read you about it. This particular machete, yeah? Okay. This is an 18 inch blade pata di cucci machete, which according to Imakasa, the pata di cucci represents in many ways the prototypical machete shape. It is fairly evenly weighted along the entire blade. It is easily slipped into a sheath, which is useful. Okay, so the blade, which I've been playing with machete, machete, Mm, my shit, mm, my shit. Now, I don't know if you're going to play it, but here it is. As I said, the blade is SAE 1074 high carbon steel. Blade thickness above handle is 125 millimeters, at tip, 1 millimeter. Blade width at handle is 375 centimeters, and at widest point, 5.75 centimeters. It has an injected handle. Remember this is oak. Here we go. Yeah. Hold up there. Bodil, the natural fibres, mate. Cause when we drop the spear, we got the neutron bomb. That's where it went bloody well wrong. Because when we drop the spear, we got the neutron bomb. That's where it went bloody well wrong. Oh, I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Diddly dee 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 dee. Barker, that's not serious bushcraft! Oh, sorry, sir. Oh, but this is a dry wood, yeah? Dry and dead long a while, yeah? Yeah, but that's quite thick. Yeah? I'll show you a bit. Yeah?
Oh yeah, pretty thick. But it's dry, see? Easy to do one chop. That's so clever, don't know what to do. Think it's good earth, it's bad in the moon. That's so clever, don't know what to do. Think it's good earth, it's right to the mud or the bloody moon. That modern man is a mutation. He may have become a nightmare He's threatened to destroy the earth The cat modern man is a mutation The gaming had become a nightmare He's threatened to destroy the earth Forgive me, this is my opinion. Bushcraft without attendant cultural elements Songs, dances, music, stories, ceremonies, ways and thinking what we concern ourselves with in Indigenous Education, the Society of Scout Trackers and Native Games, to me, it's like a river without water, a world without plants and trees and creatures or children. Rubbish one. Not worth it, mate. What about the bottom of the Yeah. Huh? Can we get it? <laughs> yes, it is. The, 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 the tune is, uh, this is the tune or like the character of Japanese people. The Japanese people never, 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 never proud. And they only, only, yes, even uh, no, uh, no, not showing the power, not showing the ability, only, only, even. Very wise. <laughs> I really observed that a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Selamat jalan ya, hati-hati. But get together all your gifts, talents, and abilities, you know? The purpose of balancing creation and giving in beauty to life. Morning, grandfather. Bring you my daughter, Ehama, to greet you and give you blessings today. Great spirit, great mystery. This is my daughter. She's come out to sing to you. The grandfather. First visible manifestation of spirit. Lighter of the world. 
lighter of the world, bringer of life. The grandmother earth, who gives us all birth, yeah? Bring my daughter to you, grandfather, grandmother. <coughs> Made up of. These are a present for a harmless first class teacher, Mrs. Edwards. Grass thatched wiki up. Oh, like a, like a teepee, yeah? Made of, of. You've got your supports and then just grass thatching, yeah? We'll read. Grass wiki up. Nah, just looking. Yeah, there's a graph, grass roof top there. I have to tell you the diameter you um sometime but it's big enough for several people to sleep there. You would never know how much grass there is in there. I was getting like real steady slow even at the beginning and they're just steady. Unbelievable friend. And you have a tool that you trust and you love and you have over many years and never ever lets you down. Sharp as well, does every task. You can batten it through massive, through, through logs. It's truly incredible. And yet it's so light and versatile. You can rough out carvings, you can do certain amount of carving work with it. You can do really f pretty f damn fine stuff. You usually, most people usually just use a knife for. And you can certainly do heavy work that you would you would do with an axe, you would do with parang, you would do with anything. But obviously if you were splitting a load of logs you would be better off with an axe. You know? And obviously if you were doing super fine little bit of whittling, then you'd be better off with a little knife. But as one tool, the most versatile tool, the most never let you down tool, the most incredible tool, the Yamaka Samashet. It may not look unbelievable. You know, it's there's fancier shaped blades and a nice wooden handle or whatever, but I'll tell you what man, so comfortable. So Utah, so incredible. The cost was virtually nothing. And yet it is unbelievable. In the morning the sun makes a fire, the sun is paint to set on his way. Early in the morning the sun rises, makes a great fire, puts on his paints to see him on his way. Early in the morning the sun rises, makes us campfire, puts on his head. <coughs> and this is permission to play this sacred instrument. The beautiful wife, the grandfather, the mother. The spirit and mystery of the earth. Remember, without the earth we'd have nothing. Nothing. We have to put the earth first, man. Because if you're God, if you believe in God, and then safeguard the children, man. Fighting, martial arts, it's all very well, man. But there's a lot more good things to do in the world, yeah? So, you know, take it easy. All the best. But he gives something to future generations. And I invite you to do it through this project where we want to save a hundred thousand acres of rainforest. Us together, you and me, all of us, yeah? And we'll call it the children's forest and it's something for the future, yeah? Something to leave a legacy and pay back our debt to nature. Mm. Hey, Alma, should we do it? You know, Chief Seattle was right. You know, he said, we belong to the earth, the earth. 
does not belong to us, yeah? That's the fundamental thing, yeah? Okay? We've got to see the trees for the wood. The trouble with the bushcraft sort of survival, primitive living type thing can very easily slip into you're just following, can't see the wood for the trees, you know? Just going around looking at only see it products. What you can use, okay? There needs to be a mysticism as well. Learn to communicate with nature, yeah? Communicate. Yeah, by all means, talk to the trees, but also learn to listen, have a conversation, communicate. Yeah, that requires going into receptive, learning to listen, to converse with nature. And we can do it. But it takes time and receptivity and good listening skills. Yeah. Aho. Oh. Wherever you are in your life, you can do it. Get up, greet the sun. Go sing to the waters. Yeah, take a walk and look at the miracles everywhere. Yeah, it, a world in a grain of sand, eternity in an hour. It's ours, man. Never give up. Live it. And celebrate it. And give thanks. Stop the destruction. We can do it, man. Oh, yeah, and then, then the great, yes, beautiful hand again. Looking for what? <laughs> Yeah, amongst the beautiful rocks I wanted to zoom in on. Look at that, fantastic. God bless you, Glant. Amazing colours. I have a little guide to the colours and textures of this bit of Mother Earth. And what a wonderful guide this beautiful ant is. These colours glimmering and shimmering amongst the dulcet tones. Fantastic. Amazing. Quite possible to track this, I believe. Especially for Tom Brown, he'd probably find it a cinch. But Welcome to Allah. <laughs> we are on Pasar Ubra, Rapi Mountain. Very beautiful here. Yes. Yeah. 
shit, my shit, my shit, my shit, my shit, my shit, my shit, woohoo! In my casa, you're the best by far. <laughs> we know who you are. Woo! Coming to the end of part one, this was just a series of shots to show you what's going to happen in the rest of the film, yeah? Part two is the uses. So you really check that out for detailed of the uses that you've seen here, yeah? The thing is with this film, yeah? If all I've done is inspired you to chop stuff up, and I've failed utterly. Please support the World Land Trust. And it would be lovely to support it through purchasing it in the name of the children's forest. Yeah? And love nature. Enjoy it. Part 2. Multiple uses of the machete parang. Including bushcraft techniques, sharpening, safety and much more. Part 3. Machete Adventures. The machete with different friends around the world. Part 4. Conclusion. A shocking end. A true and humbling story with some action and comedy to end. Why don't you check out my bushcraft shelves? Yeah, Native Use of the Feet is a good film. I've got several on there, you know. Our mission is simple but true. Leave a world more biologically and culturally diverse than when we found it. Please help Indigenous Education and the Society of Scout Trackers to purchase 100,000 acres for Children's Forest with the World Land Trust. Our suggestion? Rather than waste your money on fancy goods, tools, buy a simple, trustworthy one like the Amakasa, or make your own and with your spare money start paying or continue paying back the unpayable debt to nature that we all owe. Let's leave something, something wonderful, and that is their right for the children. Thank you. Now please go to www.worldlandtrust.org and buy half or one acre or more of rainforest or other special area of our planet, saving it for perpetuity. State payment is for the children's forest, and let us know. Congratulations, Earth Helper, Earth Friend, Children's Friend, congratulations. Helping to save our planet, man. Certificate. You see, you will get one certificate like this. One acre. Only it will say the children's forest on it. Yeah? Let's do it, man. Let's do it. For all our relations. Future generations. For the children. Come on. It's how we turned ourselves from wicked thoughts. Wops and twist into a delicious and shapes and form. It's how we turned ourselves from wicked thoughts. Wops into a billion twisted shapes and forms. Because modern man is a mutation. Who dreaming has become a nightmare. Who threatens to destroy the earth. Ha! <laughs> well, man, no way. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so happy about that, I had to die through this shoot myself. Abe? Abe? You in that cupboard, boy? Uh, I don't know, boss. It's too dark to see in here. Well, come on out anyway. I got a question for you. Oh, okay, okay, I'm coming out. What is it? What do you want to know? Well, I've been puzzling, Abe. I've been looking on YouTube with folks doing reviews of machetes and knives and whatnot. Seems to me the folks is more interested in blithering and blathering and buying stuff than actually doing bushcraft. What do you think, Abe? Why, Leroy, I think and you hit the nail right on the head. You were quite right. And that's another fine mess you've gotten me into, Leroy. <laughs> <laughs>
proving a point, proving a point. <laughs> that would be a very highly recognisable walk. That's what he said. Thank you so much. Okay, okay. Now just go for it. Visit www.worldlandtrust.org and go to donate. Purchase half or one acre or more. State the children's forest to be put on your certificate. Enjoy it, man. You will not regret it. Good. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. And have a great time, man. With our Earth. For all our relations, man. Aho.